All this week, our resident pilot, Dave Price, has been training to fly higher than most of us will ever get to go. This morning, he is back on Earth, joining us again from Beale Air Force Base near Sacramento, California, to take us up on the ride. Good morning again. Oh, good morning to you, Maggie. I have been so privileged to have spent the week here at Beale Air Force Base with the 3,000 men and women who make it run so efficiently. And uh, we are so proud of each and every one of them. But the highlight of this whole week was being able to fly up in a U-2 as high as man can go, so close to the stars that you feel like you can touch them. Sky should be clear, wind should be light and variable. It's a perfect day to fly. It was a great day to fly, but you don't just hop in a plane when you're going as high as man can go without heading into space. It's a painstaking process. All right, we're about to apply the oxygen. We'll go up nice and slow for you. Suited up and breathing oxygen, I was at the point of no return. I was on my way to the outskirts of Earth's atmosphere. Strapped down in that ejecting chair and crammed in that small cockpit, it was hard to relax, but adrenaline pumped in as the throttle pushed forward. Throttles look good, everything in the green. Final appears clear. Let's go touch the sky, shall we? Let's do it. In three, two, one. You feel like you're going up in the shuttle. What a view. Oh, it's only just begun. One minute, 25 seconds to 10,000 feet. You take just a minute to look outside. Oh, look at that. And then you glance back at the altimeter, and you've gone up another 10,000 feet. Between the spacesuit and the altitude, doing anything in the U-2 is more of a challenge. All right, try and whistle. You can't whistle? Yeah, lack of atmosphere or something at uh, 20, 22,000 feet of cabin altitude just ain't gonna let you. It is now minus 64 degrees Celsius outside, in, in less than an inch away. You get so wrapped up in the beauty and the novelty of everything that it's easy to forget the danger. If we depressurized right now at 70,000 feet, what would happen? Well, without the protection of our uh, high altitude suit, what are you calling about? Our, uh, our blood would boil instantly and we would, uh, we would cease to continue living up here. As you approach 70,000 feet and you look outside, you can actually see the curvature of the Earth on the horizon. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. There's a peaceful beauty below you and bright sunshine on your face and a rich dark sky above. There's so much quiet. It's so smooth. It's so peaceful and we're just looking down on this, this Mother Earth. It just looks so beautiful. It makes you want to you know, fight to protect it every day. Time stops at high altitude. Your thoughts float between heaven and earth just as you do. And just as you get teased with being the highest person in the world, higher than anyone else but the astronauts, gravity calls you home. Welcome back to Earth. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> this day was my day to be on top of the world, both in the heavens and back here on Earth. Why? Because I was. I can't thank you enough. So, um, thank you each and every one of you, not only for this experience, but what you do on behalf of, of me and my family and all of us every day. This was one of the hardest assignments I've had, not because it wasn't, um, not because it, it was so difficult to do, but because it was so difficult to put these experiences into words. I just sat there for most of this trip in awe and in silence. And when we got back down here and started looking at the tape, I, I just didn't say much 
Uh, and and I, I want to thank Luke Lockowich, Major Luke Lockowich, my pilot, and the 869 men and women, such a small brotherhood and sisterhood of pilots who have flown this over the last 55 years. Fewer people fly this plane than have Super Bowl rings. Oh and that gives you some idea of how exclusive this club is. Those pictures, Dave, with you all the way up there, the space is within reach. That's the thing. That's the thing when you see those pictures. Space is right there. You look up, you think of the astronauts who are at the space station, you think of, you think of your faith, you think of God, you think of what's happening on Earth, how peaceful everything looks below versus the reality of what exists, and you're just, you're dumbstruck by the beauty of the planet we live on. It gives you a completely different perspective as, uh, as you descend and, and land on Earth. And I bet you feel microscopic, minuscule up there. You do. You're above everything. You're above the planes that fly. You're above all that runs around and makes life chaotic. And you just, you stand there and it puts things into, uh, for lack of a better term, an ultra perspective. Um, how small we are, how tiny we are, indeed how tiny this planet is when you compare it to everything above the canopy that you're in. Mm. Dave, obviously an emotional experience for you, but I gotta ask the same question Maggie asked you earlier this week. Any nerves at all when you were up there? Oh, I won't, I, not when I was up there, but I've gotta tell you, when they strap you in and you're doing that walk to the U2 and, and you're thinking back to all the safety exercises you did and the egress exercises, you think, you know, you, you, you have a genuine understanding of the danger of the missions these men and wow. women go on. And the only thing I leave with is a sense that we got to keep these men in our hearts and prayers. Well done. That we will. Thanks, Dave.